Hello everyone. This is 5% imperfect. So today we are going to start a completely new lecture series on hydraulic modeling of water supply systems using water gems. Now, if we talk about water, we know that water supply is the most essential part of one's daily life. And so the engineering by which it is supplied from the source to the household becomes very important because at the end of the day we need to provide safe water in adequate amount and pressure in general broadly classifying we can say that there are five steps involved in any design of a water supply system the first step is population forecast followed by demand calculation then source allocation further treatment and then conveyance now if we talk about population forecast why do we need to forecast the population the simple answer is the water supply system for any area is usually designed for a period of 30 years as per the cpheo manuals now what is the population today may not be the population after 30 years and in the context of india which is a developing country the population is bound to increase so therefore there should be a method by which we can estimate the population after 30 years now according to the textbook definitions we have learned various methods by which we can forecast the population example arithmetic mean method geometric method logarithmetic method simple graphical method and so on we also know the various cases in which these methods are used for example the geometric mean is used in places where there is a huge potential growth again uh, the arithmetic mean method is used in places where the city is well established when we talk about how the industry uses such methods the simple thing is that they simply has an excel sheet or some companies has their inbuilt portal on which you just put the decadal populations and it gives you a forecasted population based on the method you choose however at many places what we do is we calculate the forecasted population by four or five methods and report the average population in case you want the excel sheet by which uh, you can calculate the population once you reach a consulting company please let me know in the comment section apart from all this one of the most important thing about population forecast is it is not that easy as it is written in the textbooks because and it is the most important part of water supply engineering because if your population forecast or demand calculation is wrong then your entire design will be wrong okay so you need to be utmost careful when you are forecasting the population and this needs to be checked and confirmed that by the client who is funding you so in okay so let's talk about a city in Gujarat called Kevadia. Now Kevadia is generally famous for the statue of unity. Now let's say that we are forecasting the population for a statue of unity. Now what is happening is for calculating the population of that place we are taking into the account the past population. But earlier since it was a village and it was very less developed so the forecasted population will not give a very clear picture because we are constructing constructing some artificially built world-class infrastructure and because of this a lot of tourists will come and this is what has happened there so there we use some special methods of forecasts so in case you want to know the unconventional methods of forecast for special cases so you can request us and we will make a separate video on that now moving on after population has been forecasted we need to see what is the demand and how will that demand be catered whether we will choose the groundwater or we will choose the surface water now groundwater is generally stored in aquifers and we extract from those aquifers but as we are seeing that groundwater is becoming very stressed because the recharge is low uneven rainfall patterns high usage so in future it is seen to have a very less reliability then the other source is surface water the problem with surface water is that it needs treatment whereas in groundwater much treatment is not required however the oxygen content in surface water is very high because it is exposed to atmosphere 
where as in ground water the oxygen content is very low which is that's why we give some aeration treatment or something to the ground water before supplying again moving on after our demand has been finalized we have chose the source now we come to the distribution part now here comes the hydraulic modeling thing now if we talk about a uh, general process of water supply the water first comes from the source then it goes to various parts of the treatment unit once it has been treated either it will go to a overhead tank or it will be supplied through pumping or we can also use tanks and pumps simultaneously there are some cases where the overhead tank itself is placed at a level which is above the entire city especially in hilly areas so there we neither need to construct a overhead tank nor we need to give a pump so that arrangement is called the ground level service reservoir now i am playing a video in which you can see the general process of a water supply This animation showed something which we are now going to design. 